I've been around, round, round, round So many people let me down, 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 down There's nowhere I can go that your love won't reach me right on time Cause it don't matter where you come from Hi everybody and welcome back to another session at the table where there is a seat for every single one of you no matter who you are no matter where you're from no matter what your past is God has made a seat available just for you so right now I want you guys to prepare your hearts prepare yourselves and let's get ready to listen into the word of God I pray that this word that I give is going to be a word that is in season for you and is going to be um, a word that transforms your lives and changes your hearts share it with someone else that you know might be blessed by it um but without further ado let's get into it I worship you, and you are here, working in the midst, hey, I worship you, I worship you. I 
We're in the second Sunday of the year 2021. Can you imagine? Second Sunday of the year 2021. And I think this year is a year that people are completely taking a different way or a different approach or a different um, um, way of coming at it in terms of what do I want out of this year? Gone is 2020, 2021 is here and 2021 everybody is 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 seeing it and thinking mm, there are like for me i feel like there's there's there, there are two classes of people that or two mindsets of people or two ways of approaching it do i take it go from a perspective of um um last year was so terrible i'm not even gonna have a standard or i'm not even gonna have an expectation for this year so whatever comes come what it, it whatever it is i'll just roll with it or are you the kind of person who actually you're saying, you know what, this is another year I'm gonna go harder, I'm gonna go faster. Everything that I forgot to do last year, didn't quite get around to doing last year or didn't quite work out last year or because I was on lockdown and I couldn't go anywhere to do, I'm gonna make sure that I find a way of doing it. Whichever category you are in, listen, remember that God has got a hope and a promise and, and, and he has got a plan for your life. So I wanna talk to I'd say I want to talk to both categories of people, but let me be real with you. I want to talk to myself. And if you feel like um, 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 you can relate, if you feel like you fit the, um, um, you, f you fit what I'm saying to me, that I'm saying to myself in this season, I'm gonna sort of take you on a journey that is, 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 my, is, is, is my prayer, is my declaration over my life. So I want you to, if you say amen, that means you're declaring it over your life in this, in this year to come. So for me, 2021, the thing that I'm sort of saying right now and the theme for um, this, 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 this talk that I'm having now is, 2021, the question is, or the statement is, what now? What now? Because the reason I'm thinking what now, because it's a, it's a question that I'm asking myself, but it's a question I'm asking God, but it's a question that I'm also throwing back at the circumstances that we find ourselves in. Because 2021 doesn't, just because we've um, gone from December into January, we're still in winter. Just because we've gone from um, celebrating Christmas to crossovers um, to the new year, and we're now in a new, a new month, doesn't mean that necessarily Necessarily, things have changed. It means time has passed, but doesn't necessarily mean that things have changed. So in some sense, some instances, the question of what now is a question of, okay, what am I expecting now? from the rest of this season? Because I feel like we're still in, we're still in, we're still in a season, we're still in transition, we're still in lockdown. We still have issues that are going on that have followed us from last year. We've still got things that potentially we've wanted to do that have followed us from last year. So the question is what now? What now in the sense of even like the question of what's going to happen? How are things going to change? Are things going to change? Um, this year has started in a way that um, 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 has, has really made me ask that question of what now we had um, here at Dominion Centre we had the passing away of a very well respected man of God in the in the person of Dr Augustus Obara and my prayer and the rest of the prayer of the whole table family go um, goes out to his family his friends his loved ones um, who are in mourning right now um, but for me that really I, I, like days into not even days hours into the new year a question that came to my mind is God what now 
a question that I was thinking to myself is what is going on? Like, I, I, I know that you are still God. I know that you are still have a plan. I know, and, 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 and I know that despite what the news is saying or despite what they're saying about, we're reaching even higher levels than the first wave in terms of peak deaths or peak um, 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 infection rates and everything like that. And you're, you're, um, you're seeing people around you hearing bad news or bad reports and everything like that. What can happen now in this year? And this isn't this isn't this isn't a um, this isn't a, a a a message of sorrow, but this is a cry. The same way David will sometimes cry out to God, and from a place of despair, I feel like this is this this is from for me. And as I said to you guys before, this is for me. If you see it as yourself, and you wanna and you wanna take some of the the, the, the word of God that I wanna apply to that statement for yourself as being something that you can go along and say amen and use it as a declaration over your life. Um, for me, in asking the question of what now to God, in asking God the question of what now, it's from a place of knowing that, look, there is a promise. There is something that has been spoken. To, to, there, is, there is an expectation of the goodness of God over my life. Why? Because I am assured of the fact that God is so good that in his mercy and in his wisdom, he made a way for me even before the, the, the foundations of the world began. His word says that, look, before you even went into your mother's womb, I formed you, I had a plan for you, I predestined things for you. So because I know that God has predestined things for me, even in the same way that, 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 that um, Joseph saw um, a vision of what was to come in his future and he would have gone through um, troubles of going being being um, uh, um, abused by his brothers sold into slavery abused in the house of 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 of, of um, um potiphar and so on and so forth um i'm sure there would have been a question in his mind at sometimes at low points where he would have said but god didn't we have a plan? Didn't we have a thing that you said you were going to do? Didn't you say you would always be there to protect me? Didn't you say that I was going to do X, Y, Z? Didn't you say I was going to do exploits in your name? Didn't you say I was going to be the greatest? Didn't you say I was going to be the top of uh, my class and now I can't even take exams? Didn't you say that I was going to be um, really successful and climb the career ladder and be an example to people who are coming up underneath me? And I've just been made redundant. Didn't you say like, what now? What what can happen now in this year? And um, I want us to look at this from a um, couple of examples in the Bible. I want us to start with the story of jo um, Joshua. And for me, um, this story um, or this 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 passage um, where God speaks to Joshua just after Moses it passes away. Um, and gives him a bit of a um, um, encouragement, gives him a bit of um, um, focus to say, look, the people of Israel haven't quite yet got there yet. There was a promise that they would enter the promised land. There was a promise that they would be delivered from the Egyptians and then that they would enter into a promised land. And they ended up going 40 days, walking around the wilderness, going through things like cursing the fact that they'd even been taken out of slavery there's, there's some of them are saying look it's better that we were a slave in Egypt than where you brought us to that that's what they were saying to Moses and 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 we see that Moses takes them so far and then it gets to a point where Joshua is now taking over and when Joshua is taking over they're still not in the promised land yet they're still not yet seeing the fulfillment of the thing that God had called to them to do. Um, so, um, the, the fulfillment of the promise that God had said or said over their lives, that said over their nation. And in, 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 in taking on this massive mantle of one, a, a great man in, in, the, in the person of Moses, um, Joshua was given some instructions. So I want us to quickly turn, if you can with me, I hope you've got your Bibles or on your phone or whatever you've got. I want us to have a look at Joshua chapter one, verse six to nine. Joshua chapter one, verse six to nine. And, and this is what um, God says to Joshua after, um, after the, 
after 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 Moses is dead and he's telling him look you're now going to be the person who's going to be looking after my my chosen people you're going to be the one to bring them to the promised land he says to him um, he says to Joshua um, in, in, in start from verse 6 be strong and courageous for you are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land I swore to their ancestors I would give them be strong and very courageous be careful to obey the instructions Moses gave you do not de um, do not deviate from them turning neither to the right nor the left then you will be successful in everything you do study the book of instructions continually meditate on it day and night so that so so you will be sure to obey everything written in it only then will you put only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do this is my command be strong and courageous do not be afraid or discouraged for the lord your god is with you wherever you go for me like that alone is my prayer for every single person who is watching right now that is my prayer over my life that is my prayer and declaration over your life that is my prayer and declaration over your friend's life anybody who's like i don't know if god cares i don't know if god is really listening to me i don't know if god really really understands my pain i don't know if i've done stuff that has meant that god does not listen god has given give, like god god is a good god he's a forgiving father he is a loving king he has a promise that he's promised to you even if it's a promise that he's promised to your sisters or that like your, he said to your sister he told your sister okay your, you, this daughter of mine is going to be great maybe a promise that he gave to your grandma to say look this son of mine will be will be a great man this son of, like god has promised has 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 declared and decreed some stuff over your life and even as you are coming closer to it there is still an instruction there is still an instruction that joshua had here and it was an instruction that was repeated three times to him in this passage to be what to be strong and courageous to be strong and courageous why did he need to be strong why did he need to be strong so what does it mean even to be strong to be strong means that you are not moved or or or, or you're not shaped by external forces if i'm soft if i was a, um, a soft ball or something like that i've got some tissue here if you can see this tissue here this tissue soft so if i apply some pressure to it this tissue is is is, is yielding to the pressure that is coming on it right now as i'm as as, I, as i'm pushing it from the from 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 one side to the other side and it's actually yielding to that pressure but if i'm if if, if i'm if, if if the tissue was firm or if it was um, this this phone I've got here, if I'm actually pushing it and put applying the same amount of pressure to it, it's not. I've just taken my phone off what I was looking at. It's not actually changing. When Joshua has been told to be strong, he's the God is telling him, look, do not change because of what is happening around you. There are a multitude of things that's coming up around you. With when your faith is tested when your faith is 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 being taken to the next level when your faith is being activated because you have to start relying not on your understanding not on your wisdom not on your um 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 on your past um, um, records, not on your bank balance, not on on your on your on your health, but on God. When you have to start relying on that, that's the point in time when you need to be strong. You need to make sure that you're you're not letting the pressures from around the um, from from the world, the pressures of life, the pressures of circumstance, to mold you, to shape you, to reform you. Because you are strong in who you are, and who are you? You are a royal priesthood. You are a chosen generation. You are set aside. You 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 have been bought with a price. You are a precious son or daughter of the King bought with a price that's who you are and you need to be strong in that even in this season 
even as we walk into this season of 2021, even in this season that we still find ourselves in, we need to remain strong and not just remain strong in that conviction. We need to remain strong and be courageous. Being strong is about where you stand firm. Being courageous is now about how we progress. Being, being courageous, look, being courageous, um, a dictionary definition of courage, um, of, of courage is the ability to control your fear in a da in dangerous or difficult situation. The ability to control your fear. Aji, I'm worried. Aji, I'm, I'm, a bit, I'm a bit anxious. Like, are you not hearing what's going on? Like, like to panic would be normal. If you are being courageous, you are controlling that fear. Listen, David said that, look, yet when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you are with me. You are my, like, when, 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 we, when, 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 when he's talking about that, like, he's not talking about when it's easy. He's talking about the times when you're, you're, you're expected to be afraid. When you're walking through a valley of, sh of, of shadows and of death, that isn't a place where you're sort of smiling and, and having a picnic or anything like that. That's a place of fear. That's a place that, that, that invokes fear in you. But in that place, he's confident in God being with him. And because of that, he's taking control of that. So when we're saying, when, when, when God is saying to, to, to Joshua, listen, what you need to do, you're taking on this mammoth of a task to continue the work of Moses, yes, but then also not just to continue it, to bring it to fulfillment in terms of taking the people of Israel into the land that God had called them to. Be strong. Don't let the pressures of outside be the thing that shapes you. You hold firm. You hold your shape. You hold to who you are. You hold to the integrity. You hold to the truths that you've studied in his word. You hold to the truths that because you studied the book of instructions continually and meditated on them day and night, you hold to those things. But not just holding on to those things. You are courageous. This is a time now, 2021, if we're looking at, 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 at um, what, 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 what now? What should I be doing now? What should I, this is a time where we need to be as believers, as children of God, we need to be courageous. We need to stand strong, stand strong in our faith. This isn't a time where it's like, okay, I, um, I, I can't come to church, so church is pointless. This is a time where your faith needs to be strong. Your prayer needs to be strong. Your prayers need to be courageous. Your praise needs to be strong. Your praise in this time needs to be strong. Your praise needs to be courageous. Your praise needs to be courageous. Your praise needs to be the kind of praise that takes hold of that fear and puts it in check. That takes hold of that situation that says, this is, this is what like, uh, I'm, I'm worried about this, I'm worried about it. And says, no, I'm putting you in check and now I'm doing this. We need to make sure that the same, the, 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 and, and understand this. God said all of that to, to, to Joshua to say this, look, do not be afraid or discouraged for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Brothers and sisters, aunties and uncles, because I know there's a couple of y'all that sneak on here and watch us as well. Aunties and uncles, like whoever you are, understand this, that the, the call for you to be strong and courageous isn't just a call for you to be strong and courageous in a vacuum or in, 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 in a, a space of your own strength or in space of your own ability or a, strip, a space of your own um, um, power or know-how. It's a, it's a call for you to be strong and courageous, but to be strong and courageous knowing that wherever you go, no matter what situation happens, no matter what comes, God has got you. So we're in 2021 now. Yeah, we're in 2021 now. Last year, around this time last year, I remember talking about um, visions and, 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 and how to make sure that we're, we're setting visions and goals and everything like that. And um, for me, 
understanding this, the passage before was about a man who was about to take over, making sure that there's a fulfillment of a dream, a fulfillment of a promise. Joshua was, was going to be doing that. Habakkuk 2, 3 says, says this, look, this vision is for a future time. It describes the end and it will be fulfilled. It is, if it seems slow in coming, wait patiently for it will surely take place. It will not delay. I'm going to read that again. Habakkuk 2 verse 3. This vision is for a future time. It describes the end and it will be fulfilled. If it seems slow, if it seems slow, if it seems slow in coming, wait patiently. How many of us right now, are there things that if we look back at 2020 and we were like, yo, this is what I wanna be doing in 2020. This is the year where I'm gonna start this. I'm gonna kickstart my business. I'm gonna like, there's things that we've started, but it's like, God, mm, 2020 really dragged me back. It really, like, it really had me on lockdown. It had my goals on lockdown. It had my dreams on lockdown. It had my emotions on lockdown. It had uh, every part of me on lockdown. If there were things that you, that you know God had called for you to do based on the vision that you saw for your life, the visions that God had for your ministry, the visions that God had for your purpose, the, the, the visions that God has shown you for, for, for your business, the visions for God has showed you for your family. If there were things that you're seeing and it's like, God, I'm not there yet. And I don't know what's going to happen in this year because like <laughs> what now could happen? Understand this, the dream, the vision was for an appointed time. It was for a specific time and it's potentially a time in the future and it's still to come. But listen, even though it's taking time, even though it's going slow, even though it tarries, even though it's like, yo, when, when, when? wait patiently wait patiently and in that waiting we've got to be strong but then i want us just to go, jump back like i'm not going to get too much into vision and, and and making sure how our vision aligns and whatnot but i just want to point out this 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 point in which in which habakkuk is telling us to wait patiently for the fulfillment because this will happen this is an encouragement to us that yes god is going to be with us wherever but then also we have this encouragement that look we need to wait patiently and understand that it the things that god has called for us will come to pass for that vision but if we jump a little bit before this verse three and we jump to verse two of Habakkuk 2.2 2. Um, we see that when it says to write the vision and make it plain understand this God wasn't telling Habakkuk to just write down any old vision he wasn't telling Habakkuk Habakkuk what do you want to do he wasn't telling him yo what is it that you want what is it you want your bank balance to be no 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 understand what was happening there was God was downloading into him his vision so it wasn't just a uh, write the vision it was no it's write the vision that i have given you write down my vision write down my yeshua write down my vision god's vision how many of us if we look back at what we wrote down at the beginning of 2020 we're writing down our own visions but not writing down god's vision when we're saying what now when we're saying what can come of this new year to come, the question I want to ask you is, in your questioning what is coming next, are you looking at what is God's vision for my next? Or are you still looking at your vision for your next? Because if you're looking at your vision for your next, you're going to do that on your own. You're going to be struggling to do that on your own strength. If you're looking at what is God's vision and you're right and you've written that down, I want you to even like, like, eat, like, I don't know if people are doing New Year's resolutions or declarations or, or, or resolutions and saying promises. OK, I'm going to do this. I'm going to like because I don't know. Some people, some people think, uh, is it worth it this year? Like, yeah, this, uh, 2020 was a scrub year. No, I didn't age it at all. I'm still I'm still 25. I'm still 21. I'm still like 19. No. <laughs> When we're saying, I want you to write down your vision 
I want you to write down God's vision for you. That means you've got to spend time actually listening. That means you've got to spend time actually seeking the face of God to say, yo God, what is your vision for me? Not in this year, what is your vision for me? Me, what is your vision for my life? What is my purpose? Understand this, when we have unlocked God's vision, God's purpose, God's identity of us, the thing that he sees, this is how I see you, therefore this is what you fulfill. When we unlock that and we write that down and we make it unmistakably, this is who I am, this is who I am, not because this is who I think I am, this is who I am because this is how God, well, God sees me, then understand this, even in the times when it seems like we aren't that, even in the times where it feels like God has called you to be a prayer warrior, for example. Ha, <laughs> Aji, I ain't prayed in like, yo, fam, I can't even tell you the last time. Understand this, God's vision of you is, therefore, he, you are. And even though his vision for you is for a future time and it describes the ending and it's possibly not completely fulfilled yet, understand that it is slowly coming right and because it's slowly coming you need to exercise some patience in not giving up on that don't give up on who god has called you to be sister don't give up on who god has called you to be don't give up on that dream that god has put into your heart don't give up brother on that thing that god has told you birthed in you that fire that he's put inside you that thing that you think you know what i'm a bit too i'm a bit too shy I don't really know the words. I don't really know how to, no, 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 no. Understand this, that God has said that he will be the one to support you in the fulfillment of all of that. Because at the end of the day, the vision you're talking about needs to not be your vision. It needs to be his vision. Write down his vision, make it plain so that you can see and run with it. And understand this, Philippians chapter one, verse six tells us this, tells us this assurance. And I am certain that God, who began a good work within you, will continue his work until the final, until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. This is an assurance. This is, this is a promise. This is a promise in God's word that God who started a good work, when did he start this good work? He started the good work when he died on the cross for us. He started the good work when he, he sent his son to earth to be God made flesh so that he could pay the ultimate price to redeem us back to him. And because he started that good work, because he started that work, good work, he will continue that work and he will continue to change us, re, re, realign us. He will continue to restore us. He will continue to, 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 to bring us back to who we are to be in him. Because when the world tells us um, um, there is a drought, when the world tells us there's a pandemic, when the world tells us there's a recession, when the world tells us, look, we've just, businesses don't really know how to function right now because we're in a new um, trading tariff with, where Brexit has just happened. Um, businesses are doing this and that. When the world tells us, look, look, um, families are, are, are being broken up. There's pressures on, 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 on people. Schools don't know how to function. Universities are, are, aren't what they used to be. When all of that is going under, understand that the thing that holds you, the thing that holds you as a believer, the thing that holds you, brothers and sisters, the things that hold you as people who are loved by God, the thing that holds you as people who are loved by God, you just need to believe that. The thing that holds you is the fact that God who started that good work on the cross will make sure that he finishes it and make sure that the things, the visions that he has, the plans that he has for your life come to being. I want to pray for someone out there. I want to pray for someone out there who, for you, 
you are not sure um, if God's hand is over your life. You're not sure if God really is involved in the things that you are about. I want to pray for you right now. Wherever you are, just put your hand on your chest, put your hand on your heart, put your hand on your head. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for your, sister, um, your, your, your daughter. I want to thank you for your son who's listening to me right now. Father God, I pray that they will come to understand your vision, how you see them, Lord God, how you love them, Lord God, how much you care for them, that you would bankrupt heaven just to reach them, just to save them, Lord God, just to take them from where they are, Lord God, to raise them to the heights that you have for them, to restore them to a, a place where no man, no woman, no institution can put a value on them, can, 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 can say anything over them, but you alone, Lord God, speak goodness over them, Lord God. Father God, I thank you for the release of blessings into their life. I thank you for for the release of love into their life. I thank you for the release of freedom into their life. I thank you for the release of forgiveness into their life, Lord God. Father God, I ask that this day, Lord God, be a change for them. That Lord God, when they, are, when they look back on this year and they're seeing all the things that could have been and they're seeing all the things that did happen, they will know that throughout it all, Lord God, wherever they went, Lord God, in the same way that you said you would be with Joshua, Lord God, you are with them, Lord God, and you have been with them, Lord God, and you will finish the work that you said you would, that you, the, the good work that you started on the cross in their lives, Lord God. Father God, I thank you. And I give you all the praise and glory for the work that you're doing in my brothers and sisters' lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Look, if that was you that I was praying for, I want you to get in contact with us in the comment section so that we can continue to pray further. Look, this is a, this is a, this is a month where a lot of people take time to refocus, re-evaluate. Um, let's do that as believers, but let's do that and be strong in doing it and let's be courageous in doing it. Whether it means that you need to go on a fast, we've got the church fast coming up at the end of the month. Go on that fast and spend time seeking the face of God and saying, look, God, let me go back to basics on this right now. Because with everything that's gonna come at me this year, I know already the year can go sideways super fast. We've seen it happen. We've seen a 2020. In this year that's coming, what now? What do you want me to do? What is it that you have for me, Lord God? As believers, let's push in and let's pay attention and tentatively listen to the call of God. Listen to the voice of God and let's begin to write his vision. Let's begin to write his vision for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh